Welcome back! Despite our luck of ending up on the land of the Green Isles, in the shipwreck, it turns out uh, things aren't actually really going all that well for us, because the Vizier al Hazret told us that the King and Queen are dead, and that Kasima won't see us, and is going to be married to the Vizier, which was apparently the wish of uh, her father and mother. And she herself also uh, wants that, according to the Vizier. However, I trust this Vizier about as far as I can throw him. Not only because Kasima described him as that horrible Vizier in the previous game, and said that he was uh, a friend of Mordak, but also, um, I actually believe that Vizier is ancient Arabic for he who plots to overthrow you. I am sure there is more going on here, and we'll have to get to the bottom of this and see if we can find a way to uh, meet uh, with Kasima. But I have a feeling the guard dogs aren't going to let us back in. Back in. Please, if you'll only be reasonable, I really must see the princess. Be gone! You're not welcome at the castle, Prince Alexander of Daventry. We have our orders, and they are quite clear. It seems that the guard dogs are loyal to the vizier, and uh, aren't gonna let us back in, unfortunately. Let's try and find another way back in. Maybe we can climb these vines. Alexander can't pass through the castle walls, nor can he scale them with the guards on alert. Well, so much for that idea. Maybe this path leads to a uh, back entrance. Or to a blank wall. The side of the castle is one big blank wall. The path turns into dirt here and continues along the side of the castle. Alexander is standing next to the side wall of a castle. Unlike the well-guarded castle entrance, this area is deserted. Perhaps the guards are confident that the wall itself is impregnable enough to stop any would-be intruders. Okay, so all we need is uh, some TNT, and we'll be able to break in quite easily. The wall is quite solid. Alexander's hands would give way long before the wall did. Well, when in doubt, C4. But we don't have any. The narrow path ends abruptly at a pile of boulders. Well, it doesn't look like we're getting in through here either. Which means there's nothing we can do except, well, uh, try to learn as much as we can about this strange land. Go against the vizier's wishes and uh, explore a little. I mean, I'm sure he was exaggerating uh, how inhospitable these lands are supposed to be. I mean, if you read the guidebook uh, of the Land of the Green Isles, it uh, clearly describes this place as being very friendly and nice and nearly paradise. So why would that have changed? Oh, there's one thing actually I forgot to show you on the beach. And it's something that very clearly demonstrates the difference between this game and King's Quest V. Sort of demonstrates what was wrong with King's Quest V and what is, uh, well, not wrong here. Even still, I am going to save. Create my uh, death save game for situations that I might not survive, as I usually do. King Graham seems to have been uh, allergic to water in the previous game. Because basically anywhere you tried to swim, you'd immediately die. Yeah, 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 I know, strong currents, whatever. But, uh, let's try what happens here. The ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. 
Okay, strong currents again. Apparently we still can't swim, and actually that matches what it says in the guidebook, um, and matches the fact that we, you know, had a shipwreck. These seas are not uh, particularly safe. But look what happened. I walked into the sea, and I didn't die. I got a warning, an honest-to-God warning, about something that would kill me if I tried it before it actually killed me. I mean, I'd be dead by now if this was Kings of Five. Of course, it's still a Sierra game, so if you ignore the warning... The underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. Before Alexander can retreat, the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Tickets out! Next! Nothing like getting swept off your feet. This game has some great puns in the death messages. Or horrible puns, depending on your point of view. And I like quite like this uh, death sequence as well. Including the music. Which is uh, excellent in this game anyway. One of the best soundtracks um, Sierra has ever done, in my opinion. And one of the best soundtracks in video games in general, actually. Okay. But anyway, the point of that was that the game actually is nice enough to warn you before you die here. And although this game does have uh, its share of uh, instant deaths as well, usually you can tell in advance that something bad is going to happen. So this game isn't nearly as cruel with its uh, deaths as Kings Quest V was. Making it much less frustrating! Okay, let's go check out the village. By the way, if you didn't go to the castle first, then the first person you speak to in the village will be the one Alexander asks where he is, and will be the person who confirms that uh, this is the land of the Green Isles. Charming uh, little village. Alexander is standing on a sunny village street. There are open shops to his right, a hard-packed path beneath his feet, and palm trees waving over his head. To the north, a key-shaped arch leads to another part of the village. Let's see, what do we have here? A couple of shops and somebody sitting on the street. An old beggar is peddling his wares in the village. He offers a variety of lamps, all neatly lined up on a long pole. Old lamps for new! Old lamps for new! Old lamps for new? That sounds like a very strange business model. Let's talk to the, uh, to the man. Good day, peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? Well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. Okay. Are you sure you're uh, right in the head, Mr. Uh, Lamp Peddler? Then again, the guidebook does describe uh, the fact that people in the land of the Green Isles apparently uh, are obsessed with the idea of finding genies. Let's take a look at the shops. The village buildings are made of rough sandstone stucco. This one has a shop on the street level and a private dwelling up above. Steps lead up to the shop door. Hey, 
the villagers bustle about their chores. They seem a busy, if somewhat subdued, lot. Well, I would be subdued if my king and queen were dead. And some weird vizier is, uh... in charge. The sign above the door says, Ali's Books. I'm going to guess that's a bookstore, then. Let's take a look inside. Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? It is indeed uh, a bookstore. This is uh, sort of a nice perspective with uh, <laughs> the books in the front. We're sort of looking in through one of the bookshelves. Alexander is standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. And there's also this completely non-ominous guy in a black cloak standing in the back of the shop. I'm sure that's really not uh, important at all. An old man occasionally steals sidelong glances at Alexander from under a concealing hood. Yeah, see? Not suspicious at all. How could we even think that was suspicious? The bookshop owner is a thin, middle-aged man. His intelligent eyes are slightly blurry from long nights spent reading by candlelight. Is that how that works? Well, he seemed uh, nice enough, so let's see if we can uh, ask him some questions about this uh, strange land. Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village, and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. 
wise words. And we'll make use of them in the next video.